The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Seven seniors take the field of Bobcat Stadium for the final time tonight as Texas State plays ULM in a Thursday night affair in search of their third win of the season. Low offset at the right of Jones out of the shotgun three wide. Takes a snap. Warhawks rush three. Pass middle caught in stride. 35 across the 40 and down to the 45 yard line. First down of Texas State. Big catch and run there by White to tight end. 39 for Jones. Two receivers right. One to the short side left. Hawks showing a blitz. They're going to rush five. Jones being pressured, steps up, rolls right, eyes downfield, pass caught, Gaines cuts inside 35, back outside to the 32 yard line in the first down into Warhawk territory. One receiver either way, Hawk showing a blitz. Upright stance, takes a low pistol snap, option play to the near side, will pitch to Best at the 15, cutting back inside of the 10, into the secondary, Best finally stood up out around the nine yard line. Goal to go, coming up on an option play, good for 15 yards. The snapper is Lange, Rhodes on the hole, drops down to his right knee. Calls the snap, set down, kick is up by Kaba, and Kaba's kick puts the Bobcats on the board. Trips right, one receiver left. Jones takes a snap, rolls right, looks right, passes caught by White at his shoulder pad and dropped it around the 29 yard line. Gain of 20 yards. Takes a snap, a couple of steps in, swings the right leg. High, booming punt. The ball behind the returner takes a hop of the 20, tapped before it hits the goal line, down at the one yard line. What a play by the Bobcats special teamer downfield. Warhawks a three-man line, bring the blitz, past their side, high, caught by Smith at the 30-yard line, makes him miss the 40, cutting up field and dives down to the 50-yard line on a gate of 16 at a first down. Out of the timeout, second down and six at the ULM 34. It's an option play. Jones will keep it, pitch it to Best, running right inside the 20, skirts of the bounds. They'll mark him out of the 20-yard line. Third and 10 at the Warhawk 20. Here comes the blitz, five-man rush. Jones steps up, pressure. Dances, looks, throws towards the end zone. The pass is caught. Falling on his back for the touchdown. Lawrence White. I know I had a couple of bad drops earlier, but coach kept calling my number. He didn't lose faith. And I noticed that every time I went out for a pass, they're rushing over to try to guard CJ, three Craig, and they leave it wide open. And T Jones made a great pass, just great protection, and it just worked out. Final home game of the 2015 season, the Bobcats trying to give the seniors a proper send-off and have a 10-3 lead at the break over the visitors from Monroe, Louisiana. Well, they, you know, three points is all they've given up. You gotta like that, and we've tackled pretty well. We fit things pretty well, and so I hopefully, hopefully we'll keep it up. Kava hands it aside, takes a snap, rolls right, and punts the ball away. High, wobbly punt. And Williams makes a fair catch, goes off his shoulder pad, and is picked up by Lange. At the 44-yard line, the deep snapper recovers a fumble, and the Cats are in business again. Jones out of the pistol, takes a snap. It's a handoff low, running left, bounces outside of the 40. Down the sideline, 35, out of bounds, out around the 32-yard line. With that run, Robert Lowe, the fourth leading rusher in Texas State history. So once again, this time from 27 yards out, Lange to snap to Rhodes. Snap, set down, kick is up by Kaba, and Kaba pulled it wide to the left, no good. And it remains a one-score game. Third and 16, they'll mark it at their own of 46. Ball just over the ear of the Supercat logo. Five wide for Carrington, four-man rush. Steps up, heaving it deep middle for Holly, and the pass intercepted by Shaw at the 20, 25, 30. Running left to the 40. Blockers in a convoy, midfield. Running left to the 30-yard line. Tight up to side. Like cuts back inside, 15, 10, and down to the five yard line is Aaron Shaw. Studying film, usually when he, he's a one sided quarterback, so when he opens up one way, he usually doesn't look the other way. So when I seen him open up that way, I just took off running full speed, spotted the receiver that he was looking at, and happened to make a good play. Yeah. Woo wee, God. 
was tired and caught a cramp in my hamstring. So it was, it was, it was a long run. I, I wouldn't have made this big impact, this big play if my D line wouldn't have got penetration and forced him to throw that pass. So hats off to my defense for balling out the whole night. It was pretty big to, to you know, get us down there and give us a chance to have some cushion and uh, you know, not only to get the turnover, but to turn it almost into a touchdown. In fact, I told him I was mad at him. He didn't score. You know, and then he laid on the ground like he was hurt. I mean, come on. Really, yeah, that's what I figured. You're just tired, but it was big. It was a big play in the game, maybe the biggest. And my teammates ain't let me, they ain't let me live it down either. <laughs> four yards, y'all. Four yards. I was too tired to say anything, but I know, I know. Second to goal for the Warhawks. 16. Jones out of the pistol. Motion from White to tight end, left to right. Play fake. Jones looks right, throws right. Pass caught by White and walks into the end zone for the touchdown. Third and ten at their own 39. Five wide again for Carrington. Bobcats three-man rush. Carrington steps up, throws middle. Pass almost picked off again. Again going for Holly. The pass defended out in space. Out around midfield. That's going to bring up fourth down for the Hawks. Jones hands off low of the middle. Bounces left 40. Middle of the seams, 45 midfield. Tripped up with his ankles at the ULM 46. So just as we're talking about the senior from Waxahachie, he explodes to the ULM 46-yard line. The defense was able to hold ULM under 200 yards total offense. Uh, what did you like about their effort tonight? Well, there wasn't much not to like. We got a turnover or two. And, uh, Played pretty solid all through the game. Uh, then, you know, they're hurting on offense a little bit too, to put it in perspective. But hey, we made some stops tonight. We stayed sound, and I thought Brad had a pretty good game plan, and uh, the kids executed it, which is the biggest thing. At halftime, you commented on how tough ULM's defense was and how tough it was to move the ball. What specifically did they do that was so tough, and how did you overcome it? Well, they're they're just kind of a moving target at all times, and a little different than any defense that you play. And it's always a grinder when you go against them. We grinded all three years to get what we had. We should have had a few more tonight. I got down in the red zone and didn't get anything, but uh, you know the guys were resilient, and Aaron Shaw makes a huge interception return for us. Oh, man. Uh, it's kind of hard to put them all in words, you know. Uh, bittersweet moment. You know, it's always good to get the win, you know. Uh, last home game, man. I know it's probably going to have a more effect on my little man than it will me because he's the biggest Bobcat fan, you know. But it was, it was a good feeling to leave home with the dub. The Texas State Bobcats give the 2015 senior class the proper send-off they deserve. The final score, Texas State 16, ULM 3. SWBC Mortgage, pre-qualify for your new home today. Find a branch near you at score.swbcmortgage.com. My family has been growing crops here since the late 1800s. We're Texas farmers through and through, and that's why we love HEB. They've been supporting local farms like ours for generations. And they buy more of our corn than anyone else in Texas. Over 10 million pounds annually, and they use it to make great products like HEB corn chips. So when you try them, you're eating a little piece of Texas. We're the Sawed Off family, and this is the locally grown department at HEB. No store does more than my HEB. At Texas State University, more than 36,000 Bobcats from all 50 states and 61 nations enjoy a beautiful hill country campus in the Austin metropolitan area. We offer nearly 200 degrees with retention and graduation rates among the best in the state. Our faculty are world-class researchers in diverse fields. And at our newly expanded Star Park, we're developing the future of nanotechnology. One atom at a time, Texas State University, the rising star of Texas. The Sun Belt's not an easy conference, so it's really fun to play in. Like, Everything's a step up. Competition, the speed of the game. But just to get the opportunity to play the game I love, get my degree. Great teams, great players, you know, outstanding coaches. and so You have to play your A game every night. Knowing that every time we go out there and play somebody, it's not going to be an easy game. You're going to get their best game every time. You never know what results you're going to get. There's never a definite winner. I think everyone has a possibility to win. I wouldn't want to be part of any other conference.
HEB's Tailgate of the Week. These awesome tailgaters decked out their campsite with HEB products in a creative way. If you want to be next week's HEB's winner, check out HEB.com backward slash tailgate. No store does more than HEB. Well, um, I'm proud of the guys and uh, happy for the seniors to get to finish on a victory uh, at home. And it uh, meant a lot to, to all of them. And just good to, to get a win. It's been a while. Um, I thought the defense played a nice game. Um, you know, they're a little limited on offense with their injuries, and we understand that. But still, uh, we held them to less than 200 yards. You don't hold anybody to that today. You've done a pretty good job. And uh, offensively, we kind of grounded ugly and found a way and uh, did what we needed to do and should have got a few, got more points out of things. Um, thought we kicked off and punted well, but uh, good Lord. It's uh, adventures in field goal kicking uh, right now. So there was tonight. So. You know, uh, Ryan Carden didn't get to play tonight because he was hurt, and he'll be back next week, I think. But, you know, we um, we needed Lawrence to step up. And uh, after he had the one go through his hands and then he made the great catch in the end zone with the pass interference, that was huge on the very next play. And then uh, uh, so it was, it was good he stepped up and made plays. We missed Ryan, and I'm sure uh, we missed Ryan. Some of his blocking, Nick Lachette stepped in and, and helped us and did some – Good things for us, and uh, you know when you when you play their defense, there's so there's so much moving targets and things. You just got to grind, and you get on the edge of things and stuff like that. And uh, you know, Lawrence, uh, I know he had some good blocks at times. He made some good receptions for us. To be honest, I'm really not supposed to get the ball. He was just scrambling, so I just try to run into the end zone, try to get open for him. He threw it up and. You just gave me opportunity to try and make a play. Yeah, we enjoyed it. I'm glad we got a win. I'm glad our coach got a win. Just gave everybody confidence because there's been a lot of frustration and adversity going on. Kai season been going. So thank you, Jesus. Well, from day one, Coach Brad, uh, since Coach Brad been in charge, he's always talked to us about energy, keeping the energy up, having good good vibes going around. So us getting those two turnovers just added a boost to the fire, to the energy, just kept it flowing. So it was nice. It was nice. You know, this team is. Uh, I mean, I still believe it's better than what it's shown this year, and um, we were better tonight. And, uh, you know, we've gone through a lot of different things with coaches and injuries and players and and stuff. It's been unusual, but, uh, you know, we're still, you know, if we keep the glue together for two more weeks, uh, we can still kind of do some things. And, you know, to the, to the guys' credit, they never let up in practice an ounce. They didn't back down. They didn't slow up. They didn't change gears. You know, uh, you lose bowl eligibility. You, a lot of teams would not do that. They, we had good, good Tuesday or Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday workouts. I mean, that's, you know, that's what we preach: the work, the process. No matter what, you just you work your process, and they they did that. They just continued to do what they do, uh, which we've got that in place, and and um, that gave us a, a chance to have a chance to win the football game. Pizza Hut, we've got a carryout deal just for you. Any pizza, any size, any crust, and any topping for just 10 bucks. You want a large hand-tossed pepperoni and mushroom? $10. Or maybe you're a large pan supreme kind of person. $10. Thinking about a combination of your own? Well, that's $10 too. That's any pizza, any size, any crust, and any topping for just 10 bucks. And get stuffed crust for just two bucks more. This 10 buck carryout deal ends soon. So hurry to Pizza Hut today.
you show your Bobcat pride. Now you can show it off and keep your money here at Texas State. Because whenever you buy at the University Bookstore at Texas State, that money stays here on campus. Apparel, books, gifts, and much more. Online or in the heart of Bobcat country, find it, get it, and keep it on campus. University Bookstore at Texas State. Your bookstore. Twenty-seven seniors took this field for the final time at Bobcat Stadium last week. Here in Allen, Texas State football, we reflect on their Texas State careers. Our senior is a four-year running back from Waxahachie, accompanied by his dad and mom, Robert Lowe and Glenda Lowe. Please welcome number 28, Robert Lowe. Well, some of these guys, uh, like Zach Crawford, for instance, uh, came in here uh, that first January when we had just taken the job and have been here through all five years of the experience, uh, through the transition, through the years of not being able to qualify for postseason, and um, you know, through the ups and downs of the program and everything. So uh, those guys uh, certainly carry significance for what they've gone through and they bought in and believed and uh, are getting their degrees and are gonna leave the program as great loyal Bobcats and have been through a lot as they've gone through this, but I've had a good experience. Well, I, you know, you can't help but love Tim Gay. He's uh, been such a um, stalwart, um, solid, like granite type young man in our program, always done the right things, always played hard, always loved the Bobcats, loved his teammates. Uh, just somebody you always knew you could count on, which means a great deal, and I certainly have a lot of admiration for Tim. Jones will hand off to Lowe, turns it a tackle at 25, breaks a tackle to 30, down the middle of the field, cutting back inside of the 40. Another guy that you could always count on and depend on, and uh, he's a pretty complete football player. He can run with the ball, he can catch the ball, and he can block, and not all running backs can do all three like Rob can. Uh, Adrian's been great. He's been a great pleasure to coach and uh, he has already been selected to play in the NFL PA game which is a real honor for him and uh, honor for us for him to be selected and uh, he he has been another one that uh, has been there since um, the beginning and has never wavered and worked hard. I think he came in at something like 365 pounds when he arrived and he's about 315 now so uh, he's transformed his body and and changed and and really played well for the Bobcats. Nine going deep middle looking for Pascal and the pass is batted and intercepted by David Mims. He has done it again his fourth pick this year and the Bobcats have it at their own 36. Yards. David was fortunate he had the role models and Daryl Morris and and Craig Mager to follow and to watch and it helped him grow and see what he could achieve and um, overcome the uh, difficulties that he encountered early in his career. And he really came into his own last year and uh, has played well for us. And he's got great speed. He's got all the attributes that uh, those other two guys have. The biggest thing that I've always taught and, and I think that these guys appreciate is the, um, the uh, feeling of accountability to each other. Uh, the feeling of playing with your teammates and trusting them and, and the bond that's created are the, are the greatest bonds that they'll ever have in their life other than their family. And uh, they'll remember these guys, they'll be back in that Letterman's Pavilion and I'm sure they'll be running faster and jumping higher than what they really did, but uh, that's, that's okay. SWBC is with you to help plan for life's little adventures. We're here so you have one less thing to worry about. We can help turn a dream into a reality. And we let you focus on your business, not on business paperwork. Wherever you are in life, we're with you. 
Today at Whataburger, we're picking the Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. We got three chicken strips, two slices of Monterey Jack cheese, topped with Whataburger's own buffalo sauce, a little bit of buttermilk ranch. The combination of the two is just right. It's crunchy and then spicy and then cool. Your mouth is exploding with flavor. It just all works together and then you add the cheese in there. It kind of wakes me up, honestly. My goodness. I can see myself eating this every time I come here. They're going to go crazy for this thing. <laughs> The Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. It's only here for a limited time. Welcome back to All in Texas State Football. During the season, coaches spend seven days a week, 18 hours a day, getting prepared for game day. Now, what's that like on their families? I initially was ready to retire. <laughs> I was really getting into retiring. And um, so, but they called about this job and I, I, I was okay with this job. It's, because um, it's, you know, it was a little lower profile, but yet they were moving up to division one. So I knew um, my husband would love the challenge. And it was a familiar because we were here 20 years ago when it was Southwest Texas. It's been a good move and we've, been, we've enjoyed it. We never have Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving, and, um, but we usually have Thanksgiving with the team. So we're gonna actually have Thanksgiving on the Saturday before Thanksgiving. And then Christmas, it's always good uh, to not be home for Christmas in our profession because that means you're in a bowl game usually. So that's always, that's, a, that's just a, a great thing not to be home for Christmas. So. The first season was difficult because, like I said, I'd never even dated him through a football season. And so I had tremendous coaches' wives that I became close with and family, uh, my husband's family, some of them were around. So it wasn't, looking back, it probably was harder than it was. Right now, we see our husbands, well, my husband sees my kids and I four hours a week. That's it for the whole week, four hours. So, and they're, she's probably the same. So. It is a long season and then recruiting starts, so it's never quite over, except for those three weeks are off in the summer, and it's finally over. And then when they do go back, at my house, we party for the month of August. I mean, we eat cereal for dinner, because, I mean, when Dad's home, you have to cook real food, and the kids are happy with grilled cheese and cereal, and, I, you know, that's, it's, it's much easier for me to... You know, he doesn't, by the time he comes home, he's so tired, he doesn't know if the laundry's done or if the house is clean. He can't tell if it's vacuumed or not because it's dark when he gets home. So it's, we've grown with each step. It's been more like climbing a mountain. You know, we started slow and we had no kids and that was fine. And then you added one and another and then another. And, you know, at this point, I can move 120 players across the United States and, and not blink an eye. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was definitely a journey that, you know, I've learned a lot of things along the way. and. Obviously, I'll continue to learn more things as the adventure continues, but um, it's, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, Bobcats, make sure to show your love and follow the Bobcats on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and their YouTube channel. The independent agents of Texas Farm Bureau Insurance want to put you in the middle of the action during an upcoming Texas State football home game. Go online to BobcatsContest.com and register to win an ultimate fan experience. That includes two reserved tickets to the game, sideline access, free game hospitality passes, and official game day t-shirts for you and a guest. Don't miss this opportunity to be up close to the action courtesy of official proud partner, Texas State Farm Bureau Insurance. Register now at BobcatsContest.com.
Welcome back to All in Texas State Football. This Saturday, the Bobcats make their longest conference road trip of the season as they head to Moscow, Idaho to play the Vandals. And now joining us over the phone to talk more about Idaho football is Dennis Patchen, the radio voice of the Vandals. Dennis, thanks for joining us. Idaho has been a high scoring team all season long. You look at the numbers, fourth in the conference in points per game, and they've scored 40 or more three times this year. What has been the key to Idaho's offensive success? Honestly, I think it's been the development of the offensive line who has got progressively better over the season. It's a team that has been hit uh, in numerous areas with injuries, but the offensive line has stayed uh, intact. Uh, and I think that's why the, the, this team has a thousand yard rusher and has been able to move the football through the air. I think number one right now is those five big guys up front. One of the best special teams weapons in the Sunbelt Conference plays in Idaho. Kicker Austin Rico, who handles all the kicking duties for the Vandals, leads the conference in punting average and has 22 made field goals this year. That also leads the Sunbelt. Definitely a player has a shot at reaching the next level. Just how valuable of a player is Austin Rico? He has been a really important player. Uh, he's only missed three field goals uh, all season long. Uh, when he goes out on the field, he's almost automatic. And the other thing that he's been able to do is, is kick the ball into the end zone, which is limiting on some of the other special teams. About two-thirds of his uh, kickoffs go into the end zone, and that's, you know, that's a comforting thought when you don't have to worry about some of the guys in the Sun Belt Conference who are able to return kicks. And then the other thing he's been able to do is uh, punting the football. He's been able to uh, flip the field. And I, I think that's a weapon that people don't often talk about. I mean, he's averaging well, over 45 yards a kick. The Vandals have done a nice job on, on special teams on, on covering returns. And when you can get a guy who can, who can get the ball up there, allow your guys to get down the field and, you know, flip the field, as if you will, that is, that is a huge weapon. And, and Rico's been good in all aspects of the kicking game this year. The Vandals enter Saturday's game with a 3-8 record, but are really a player two away from maybe five wins and playing for a bowl invite this weekend. Despite some tough losses, do you feel as if the Idaho program is close to turning the corner? I think so. I think you're seeing games that the Vandals did not win last year were winning. Coaches will always tell you that learning how to close games out is the final piece of the puzzle. I think you have, you have seen flashes of, of what Paul Petrino is trying to do and, and how to try to turn this program and the disappointing losses to New Mexico State and, and South Alabama. Uh, aside, I think that they feel that this, this, they finally turned the program and in his third year, Paul Petrino has done a nice job, and they're excited for year number four next year. The Bobcats and Vandals played at a high-scoring game a season ago, a game that came down to the final possession. Now, Texas State is coming off of a win and some extra rest, having played last Thursday. How do you feel like the Vandals match up against Texas State? I think we're going to see more points. The Vandals have been able to move the football on just about anybody this season, as evidenced by last week going to Auburn and out gaining Auburn in total yards. Uh, they've been able to put points up on the board, and the biggest problem with the Vandals is they've not been able to stop teams. They've not been able to stop the option attack uh, at times, and at times they've not been able to stop the passing game. I think this is a football game that it's going to be what defense can make. At least a couple of plays will win this game. I expect to see a lot of points scored Saturday in the Dome. Thanks, Dennis. Looking forward to the game on Saturday. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. And that'll do it for this week's episode of All in Texas State Football. I'm Brant Freeman reminding you to unleash your battle cry, and we'll see you next time.